All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our presentation this evening entitled Transforming Your Career with Non-Credit IT Courses that Upskill, Reskill, and Advance Your Future. We're so happy that you chose to spend your evening with us today, and uh, we hope that some of the information that we give you jumpstarts your journey into an IT career by leveraging some of our courses. So I wanted to share this contact information with you uh, listed on the screen now. You should see our telephone number and email address. And don't worry if you don't have a pen or paper or something to write this down with. This is being recorded, uh, so you'll have access to this presentation. Uh, but if you think of questions that you need to ask, and maybe it's next week sometime, you can use this information to reach out to us. So my name is Kobe Joyner, and I serve as the Department Head of Network and Computer Technologies here at Wake Tech. I'm joined by my colleague, Jennifer simmons Beige, who is a coordinator in the non-credit computer education area. The rest of our staff in Workforce Continuing Education includes Dr. Letitia Alford, who serves as the Senior Director of IT Workforce Readiness, and our Technical Assistant, Anna Flores, who helps us out with our documentation and makes sure we're in compliance with all the processes that we have to do. So we wanted to start off by giving you a brief introduction and overview of how our non-credit courses work. So our non-credit IT courses provide individuals with skills and knowledge needed to succeed in the workplace. This is going, these courses can be used whether you're looking to upskill, reskill, or advance your career in several of our IT programs that are designed to achieve your goals. Now, the upskilling por portion is really important uh, because what that means is that you're able to learn an additional skill. You may already be working in the industry and there may be a new position that you wanna go after. Uh, you may want to go after a promotion or just learn or change roles altogether. And so being a lifelong learner is very important, especially in technology, because we know that technology is constantly changing. Uh, this middle statistic is one I think is really, really relevant to our conversation this evening. 60% of employees believe their current skill set will be outdated in the next three to five years. We know that technology changes pretty much on that same time frame, so it's really important that you're able to, uh, again, learn to love learning and we hope that Wake Tech is the training center that you choose to um, uh, learn those new skills. So now I wanna turn it over to Jennifer, who's gonna talk about some of our course offerings. Jennifer, you there? Yes, Kobe. It helped if I unmute. Got that one tonight. Um, thank you, though. Um, so the very first class you would be looking at if you're looking to get into a career in IT would be the digital literacy. That would be a course that would help you understand terminology, build your skill set in computers and in the application programs such as Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Um, if you have the equivalent education and knowledge, then you don't have to complete that class. A lot of times I get asked, well, how do I know if I meet that requirement? One of the things you can do is to look at the course on our course offerings. And if you can complete everything that they are in the schedule of outline, then you're good to go. You would not need to complete that course because you do have the basics. Um, from there, you can branch out, even though we have two different areas down here, um, they're interchangeable. Um, desktop support, network operating systems, network administration, cybersecurity is the exception to that. 
you kind of need that background of all three of those to go into cybersecurity. It's more of an advanced skill set. That's not saying you can't do it, but you do have to have a progression there. Um, for other individuals who may be interested in um, administrative studies, we have Microsoft Office 365. We have business analytics, web development, and software development. So as I was go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. So as I was mentioning earlier, the digital literacy is designed for the participants who have little to no experience using computers, or it's been a long time since you've done any studies. Um, designed to help you learn the basics, um, the concepts, and the navig navigation systems on computers, devices, and the internet, and how to be safe and secure when using those. By the end of the course, you'll have the skills that are listed there to understand those computer computing hardware and software principles, the online foundations. You'll have gone over Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. Um, at the end of that, you will be able to take a Microsoft Word certification test to evidence competency. For the Microsoft Office 365, this, as I mentioned earlier, is a good complement for anyone who is going into office administration, um, who wants to be an assistant. Um, those will be, we will go further in depth into the skills for Word, PowerPoint, Outlook, and Excel. The difference between this class and the last class is that you would then be able to sit for the certifications for all four of these um, topics that are shown. Um, so you'll be learning how to create, manage, and edit those electric files, as well as how to enhance business collaboration and communication. Um, so those are really important to have in the field. Um, even if you're not going in office administration, you need to know the basics. So. so the IT support technician class is a bundle course that trains students on how to uh, fix computer hardware and software issues. You'll get hands on experience uh, taking apart a computer, putting it back together, troubleshooting issues and being able to fix those issues. These individuals who take this course are preparing for career in help desk support, whether that be on site where you would work with a company uh, fixing computers uh, on premises or uh, remotely where people would call you or, or get assistance via email and you would tail net into their computers and fix their issues virtually. Uh, this particular course includes the CompTIA IT fundamentals exam vouchers as well as vouchers for the A plus core one and core two exams. The network technician class is a course that prepares students for careers in network engineer, network designer, or network system administration. Students in this particular course will get exposure to Linux Essentials, as well as the CompTIA Network Plus and Security Plus curriculums. This course does include exam vouchers for the CompTIA Network Plus and Security Plus certification exams. When you take this course, you'll be able to identify, analyze, and respond to security incidents and events. You should also be able to troubleshoot and fix networks that aren't working properly. And for those of you who are interested in the 
in software development or programming. Uh, this course that we offer software developer use in Python is very popular because of the usage of Python uh, in the industry today. We do have a series of three courses that are bundled together, which would include the SQL databases, the introduction to Python, and the software development. Um, the course instruction includes both tech, technical and employability skills. Um, so we do work to have you be able to come out into the marketplace and to get an entry level job. Um, you're going to know how to do the SQL database course, which is really great to have because all the information today is stored in some types of databases. Um, and then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, the popularity of Python um, and learning those skills to write software. At the end of this course, you would be eligible to actually sit for uh, two exam certifications. One would be for Python and the other would be for databases. So the Red Hat Certified System Administrator course trains students on the network operating system Red Hat. So Red Hat is a operating system that has a lot of popularity in IT. Uh, you probably know that the Red Hat headquarters is uh, located here in downtown Raleigh. So we're lucky to have a uh, really fruitful uh, relationship with Red Hat. Uh, they provide us the curriculum and the labs in order to train our students in this particular um, uh, curriculum. Um, this course is for individuals to gain a basic understanding of the Red Hat operating system in Enterprise Linux. There are two certifications associated with this course, the Red Hat System Administrator uh, 124 and 134 certification exam vouchers are included with this particular course. We offer the Cisco CCNA 200-301 uh, course, which trains students to uh, pass the CCNA uh, exam through Cisco. Uh, this particular exam credentials students to be network administrators with a specialty area or knowledge of the Cisco IOS, as well as functionality of Cisco devices, which pretty much dominate uh, and determine how the internet works. Uh, topics covered in this course include network fundamentals, network access, IP connectivity, security fundamentals, and automation. Uh, we do have a very uh, good relationship with Cisco, with them being right here in the Research Triangle Park. We have the CTIP apprenticeship program where our students are able to participate and uh, with this apprenticeship directly with Cisco in order to uh, migrate from the classroom to on the job training. And for those of you who may have a desire to do programming, but also have a creative flair. We have the web programmer using HTML5, CSS, and the JavaScript. Um, this one contains five topics that are bundled together, which is GitHub, um, Agile, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So by the end of the course, um, you'll know how to use GitHub for the version control and collaboration, which is a skill many um, companies are now asking for. Um, I always liken it back to the old days when you programmed, you kept the code to yourself. Today, that's not the case. Um, it's open to everyone. Um, the Agile um, information assists in being able to get um, ideals to market quickly. Um, and then, of course, the CSS, HTML, and JavaScript are going to show you how to write, debug, and maintain your coding of your website. Um, at the end of this class, uh, you would be 
able to sit for the HTML and CSS certification and the JavaScript certification. We do have a question in the chat. Would you like the question now or wait to a certain point in the presentation? Uh, we've got a um, question and answer part at the end, if that's OK. Perfect, wonderful. I will I'll make sure I circle back around when we have the Q&A. Right, Thank thanks. you. Thank you. Um, and then for those of you who are interested in data, um, which is one of the fastest growing um, commodities, um, in fact, it's like money these days. Um, we do have a data analytics for business professionals. This is going to introduce you to the tools um, such as SQL, Excel, Microsoft Power BI, Tableau, and project management um, to get those skills to be able to delve into data analysis and visualization. So you'll be learning how to read, write, and to communicate the data, um, understand your data sources, how to cleanse your data, how to produce reports that are relevant to the stakeholders. Um, for this course, we do offer the Microsoft Excel course certification exam, but I have had several students go on and get their own um, certs in things such as the Power BI and the Tableau. Um, those are just shorter um, certs, so we decided not to offer those, but I have had people be successful with those. So our last class, that, or of course, we want to review with you this evening is the CompTIA Certified Cybersecurity Analyst Course, better known as the CYSA Plus Course. Uh, the CYSA Plus Course is an advanced level cybersecurity course that bundles the uh, CYSA curriculum along with the practicum in Linux dealing with cybersecurity issues and project management. Um, this particular course is designed for students who are already in the field working in cybersecurity or have completed the previous certifications in the CompTIA career pathway, such as Network Plus and Security Plus. This particular course does provide an exam voucher for the CompTIA CYSA exam. And uh, upon completion, students learn um, to use analytics to uh, identify vulnerabilities and suggest preventative measures. So this is a course that is going to allow you to upskill um, once you show those um, uh, skills in cybersecurity um, at the foundational level. All right, so let's go into some benefits of taking some um, continuing education courses here at Wake Tech. So we'll turn it over to Jennifer, who's going to talk to you about some of the certifications that we prepare students for. Thank you, Kobe. So you've heard us mention a lot of these during the presentation, but we did want to put them all together on one slide so you could get a general idea of the certifications that you can achieve. Um, through the college. Um, those certifications do go out um, and add that's your credentials showing future employers that you do have these skill sets associated with the um, CERT. So for CompTIA, we do have IT Fundamentals Plus. We have A Plus certification on the 101 and the 102 level. We have Network Plus. Security Plus and CYSA, which is your um, plus certification. For the CERTIPOR ITS, uh, these are the ones who administer the databases, HTML and CSS, the JavaScript and Python exams. Of course, with Cisco, big player here in the area, um, 
as well as CompTIA and Red Hat. Um, we have Cisco Certified Network Associate. Uh, we have the CCMP, which is the Enterprise Network Core Technologies. And we have the Enterprise Advanced Routing and Services. Red Hat System Administrator. We have, we have two parts to that. We have the Red Hat System Administrator 1 and 2. And then finally, as I mentioned earlier, with the Microsoft, we have the Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. And while this is our offerings right now, we're continually evolving and looking to uh, put on relevant technologies. So always check back with us. So one of the questions that Jennifer and I get a lot uh, when we're talking to students, especially those students who may be looking for a career change. Um, they say, you know, we want to get it, or I'm interested in getting into IT. And um, what they don't realize is that IT is a very broad uh, descriptive term that includes a lot of disciplines and areas of specialty um, areas. So um, one thing that we wanted to show you this evening during our presentation is this resource called Career One Stop. Uh, Career One Stop is a database, an online database that is housed by the U.S. Department of Labor that allows people, and I'm going to stop sharing uh, just for a second, that allows people to do um, research on their own uh, based off their interest level. And so what we wanted to do is to kind of walk you through how that resource works so that you can uh, do some self exploration because that's really important. Uh, it's important that you have an idea of what you want to do um, prior to picking out a class or using resources. Um, so I'm at the Career One Stop website, and if I go to Explore Careers and select that option, I can come down and enter a occupation and it doesn't I don't have to know the specific occupation. So I'm just going to put in a general statement like uh, cybersecurity. OK, and I can actually filter my search based off where I live. So I'm going to put in Raleigh, North Carolina. And just do a search for those positions here locally. So as I hit search, uh, it gives me some occupations to choose from. Uh, I'm going to select information security analyst. And see what kind of information that comes up. So as you can see, I can get a lot of useful information from this site. I can get a description of what these people do. I can get uh, aliases for different roles within the industry. Uh, I can play a little video to see um, more specifics on that particular role as I scroll down. Uh, I think this section is is really important. The job outlook. Uh, the Department of Labor does a uh, does forecasting, you know, 10, 15 years out. And basically what they do based off statistics and data, they're able to forecast if a particular position is going to need a surplus of workers or if that market is already saturated with folks, which means there are already a lot of people working in those fields and there's not a lot of opportunity. So in this case, and this is pretty much uh, well documented in cybersecurity, it looks to be a occupation that has a very bright outlook as far as jobs are concerned. So this would be an area that someone looking to go in would have a lot of opportunity if they chose to pursue it. Uh, there's also information pertaining to wages uh, that you can see so you can get an idea of what people make in this particular um, uh, role or position. And then as we scroll down, uh, we see other important information, what type of education people have in this field, uh, what types of certifications, and then if there are any apprenticeship programs here locally that you could take advantage of. So that's just um, 
a, a this is a really good website for you to use to kind of do some internal soul searching to kind of figure out which direction that you want to go into. All right, so I will bring the presentation back up. So we just don't want you to take our word for it. Um, we wanted to share with you a student testimonial. Uh, so we have uh, Kara Salazar, who um, was a Wake Tech student who took advantage of a sponsorship um, to be able to take some non-credit courses for free. Uh, she chose to go into some of our Cisco courses, the one that we described, the CCNA, and we wanted to allow her to kind of uh, share her story with you. My plan after graduating high school was to go to Wake Tech and receive an Associate of Arts and to ultimately transfer to another one of um, North Carolina's public universities. However, uh, life got in the way. I ended up having a little one um, about a year and a half after graduation, and then things kind of took a turn from there. It, it got to be too much um, for my school study, so I really was at that point more focused on just, you know, making sure I could put food on the table and have a roof over our heads and just provide for us in a financial sense. I remember seeing the advertisement for Tech Hire um, and the the certifications in particular and did a little bit more research and realized that the classes were not curriculum they were um, continuing education and they're a little bit more flexible in terms of scheduling so i was able to do it um you know after work tech card helped me transition um from you know a, a soon to be ending retail position uh, it helped me transition totally into the technology sector if i would have tried to just get in get my foot in the door just by myself um, it certainly would have been a much more difficult task. I'm super thankful and grateful for um, the Wake Tech Tech Hire program for giving me not only the um, the path for the certification, but also the um, career building and just self-building skills um, to be successful in those new roles and new opportunities that I've been afforded now. I was joking with someone the other days, uh, now that Cisco's going to have to get rid of me, now I got my foot in the door, but yeah, they're not getting, any, get, getting rid of me anytime soon. I can definitely see myself continuing to work in the technology sector, not just for a long time, but for the rest of my working career. I definitely have Wake Tech, tech Hire um, to thank for that, for giving me that launch pad into um, the technology sector that I wouldn't have been able to have um, otherwise. My name is Kara Salazar, and this is my Wake Tech story. So how do we get started? Um, we're going to look at some really important information, uh, especially if you are anxious to get started right away. So this is a um, QR code for those of you who have your phone with you right now. You can go ahead and scan that. Uh, it will connect you to our online catalog. Uh, for those of you who would, ours is a very simple process to register. Um, we um, do not have an admissions process. It's just a registration. Um, so you would click the register button next to the section you're interested in taking, and then you would complete the online forms and submit payment. Um, while there are no payment deadlines or payment plans for the non-credit courses, um, we do have some scholarships and other things that are available through uh, Propel is one and other companies that are also um, offering those assistance. One thing that we pride ourselves, pride ourselves on at Wake Tech is the amount of supports uh, that we provide to students. We have a lot of wraparound services to help students meet their goals, uh, one of which is uh, financial assistance. So Wake Tech offers uh, financial assistance for non-credit students through the Propel program. This is a program sponsored by the federal government that will cover the cost of a lot of our IT continuing ed courses. The application is online. Uh, once you fill it out, it'll be evaluated by our career coach in our careers pathways program. And if approved, uh, you can get the cost of the course uh, 
uh, taken care of by this particular sponsorship. Um, and we're going to share with you the link for the Propel program here later in our presentation. Uh, we have our Individualized Learning Center, better known as the ILC, which provides tutoring services uh, free of charge for our students. Uh, these services can be um, obtained either in person or online. And these tutorials are available throughout the week, including the weekends. Um, and they are available again to our both our degree and non degree students. We also have our career center and career coaching where students have access to academic coaching and support as well as assessments and referrals to um, increase employer engagement. Uh, there are financial resources and student support. Um, through our student support office or the career center. So there are a lot of wraparound services uh, that exist at Wake Tech to help you meet your goals. One of the other benefits that we can offer through the non-credit program is for those individuals who may be interested in a career um, and then want to come back later for um, college credit or to earn their associates or their bachelors. We have several programs that are associated with Wait Tech where you can transfer an associate in and come out with a bachelor. Um, we do give, there is prior learning um, experience awarded for uh, challenge exams and for the industry certification. So for instance, if you completed the Python certification, that would cover carry over into the curriculum side as a credit for that class. And so it cuts down a little bit on the time you would need to get involved um, to get that associates and they'll be able to get you into the workforce. So uh, we've come to the end of our presentation, but before we leave, we wanted to share with you some really important links uh, where you can get some information. Uh, the first link at the top uh, is a link to our course catalog. That particular link will give you access to all of our courses in, um, uh, in non-credit computer education. The second link in the middle of the page, again, is a repeat of our contact information, our email box and telephone number. Uh, if you reach out, one of us will call you back within 24 to 48 hours. And then the link at the bottom will get you information to the Propel program that we mentioned on the previous slide. Again, this is a program where it provides money towards our continuing education courses. So the courses that we talked about in this particular presentation, most of those are covered on the, under the Propel program, as well as others in other disciplines. Uh, so please check that out uh, at your earliest convenience. There may be an opportunity there for you to take advantage and uh, receive some free training. So again, we thank you for joining us this evening and we wanted to open up the floor for questions. I know that uh, we probably have some questions in the chat uh, that we can go over and. Um, yeah, we will open it up, so fire so away. I have a few questions uh, in the chat. I also put those links and the contact information in there as well. Um, so they should be able to get that from the chat if needed. Uh, the first question we have is, do you touch, um, do any of these touch on C++? At this current time, we do not have any courses on C++ in the continuing ed department. Okay, and then I did um, put the course catalog in there as well. But uh, someone is asking, are there any other programming language or web development certification courses offered in this, in this summer? They are offered in this summer. Um, we most of the courses, and I guess we should, probably should have said this and missed it. Uh, most of the courses can be completed within three to six months. Um, there may be some that go a little bit longer, um, but 
we do a rotating start and finish. Um, so we don't typically align to the college's calendar. We have our own, um, but we do have classes that will be starting. In fact, I think there is a June uh, web development class already posted, and there should be some software development being posted shortly. Great, thank you. Um, we did have uh, someone ask about uh, veteran uh, for scholarships and grants. So I put the VA link in there as well as the Propel. Um, both mm -hmm. will be great resources for any um, of our people here. Let's see here. Can you expand upon upon the Wake Tech Hire program? So I, I'm assuming that was the Tech Hire program. That was a, uh, a sponsorship program that ended about a year ago, um, but it's similar to the program that Propel is now offering. Um, so Tech Hire offered free training uh, for students to take continuing education courses. Uh, most of those courses led to a certification uh, in industry, and then um, there was some job placement um, soft skills training embedded into that. Uh, program and it's a similar experience with the propel program that's being offered now. Thank you and then I think I answered this one, but I want to confirm. Um, so they want to know do we offer CISA, which I think we I might be a Y uh, course and certification within the propel program. And if it is with the Y, it's a yes and I got that in the chat. That's correct. Wonderful. Okay, perfect. I want to make sure I had the right thing. Oh, right. well, let me take that back. I was going to say, if you, and then there is a CISA, which is the right. um, Cybersecurity and Infrastructure uh, Certification. That one we do not offer. Correct. Okay, perfect. So I included the one with the Y, so I is a no. Okay, perfect. And then we got a few more. Will certification suffice for job placement, or is it better to start out taking classes for an associate's degree? They've been working for ed tech company for 10 years as an online testing specialist and have master's in library science degree. Like to, uh, like to use more at some point, but don't need don't have the extra time and money for a four year bachelor's. Do you want me to take that one, Jennifer, or do you want to? Well, I was going to say, that's exactly what our, our department is for, for those people who need to upskill, reskill, or learn a new trade. Um, so we do offer the training in a shorter period of time um, at a lower cost, so you can get those skill sets and go into the different departments. Um, we're seeing a, a huge shift into uh, certifications taking over for job experience, um, but I would always say, you know, you could start with us, see if it's something you like or that you're going to do, and then you can transfer those credits that you've completed with us as long as you pass those certifications over to curriculum and still continue on a degree. They cover that one, Kobe. Yeah, and I would just add that um, a lot of companies, once you get your, get your foot in the door, will end up paying for the degree after the fact. So um, there are definitely opportunities to get into the job market through just certifications uh, and then to upskill either through additional certifications in other areas or getting your associates in that particular um, degree program. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, then someone, if they want to learn automation, which course would you recommend? The Cisco CCNA uh, is broken up into three courses. The third part of that course does include some automation uh, because network management, uh, being able to program hundreds of routers, um, 
it becomes easier when you can automate the process. And so um, there is a part of that curriculum that talks about the fundamentals of um, automation. Uh, we are in the process of developing a Cisco DevOps course, uh, which would go into further details about that particular skill set. Uh, it isn't available yet, but something that we hope to offer um, in the very near future. Thank you. Will the network technician course be offered this summer? Yes. So we try to offer them every uh, five to six weeks and um, we are in the process of getting our summer and fall courses published and uh, I'm anticipating within the next 10 days you should see um, additional course sections to be able to choose from for both the IT support technician and network technician courses. Wonderful, thank you. And you'll see that a lot with all of our courses for workforce continuing education as well. We are always trying to add those course offerings all throughout the year. Okay, and then we have after completion of these programs, are we eligible for applying Wake apprenticeship in these areas? And I also included the link for the apprenticeship as well. Yes. Wonderful. So, so Wakes, Wakes Works is uh, available to both continuing ed and degree seeking students. And then the last question I have in the chat following back up to the CISA, was that a program that was removed or that we've not had before? We have not offered that course uh, since I've been here, and this is uh, year five for for me and Jennifer. We came in at the same time. So um, one thing I'll say, though, is that uh, one of the benefits of continuing education is we have a lot of flexibility to move as the market moves. So if there is a course um, that you want to see us offer that we don't currently offer, you know, our doors are open to those conversations. Um, simply just reach out and if we get enough public interest from a particular area, uh, that's what happened with cloud and AWS, um, then we will, you know, investigate research and, and put that course on if we get enough um, public outcry to do that. And just clarifying, um, the CISA that the main was asking about is actually the Computer Information System Auditor cer Certification. Um, so that is not one that we offer or have ever offered either, um, but it would be similar to the CompTIA Fundamentals uh, Pathways um, because you're going to be learning the same thing and eventually going into cybersecurity with CompTIA. Just a different certification. And one thing we try to do uh, when we decide on offering a course, uh, we have to perform uh, labor market research. So a lot of our time is spent looking at what employers are asking for in terms of credentials. And that a lot of times will fuel the types of courses that we put on because we want to make sure that our courses lead to a job outcome. So you don't just take the course to take it. Um, so if you look at job search websites like Indeed, uh, LinkedIn, and you see certain certifications keep showing up, then we're going to offer courses that map to those particular job roles and those credentials. Wonderful, and we do have a few more questions coming in. I do value everybody's time, um, so towards the end of the session, but I do want to make sure we cover your questions if you don't mind staying on for a few more minutes. Um, so this will conclude our questions that we have in the chat. Um, we do have the contact information as well if you come up with further questions. And I'm glad that everybody's asking questions because the most important part when we offer these sessions. OK, so we have what is the requirement for any certification such as networking? So we follow the CompTIA career pathway. So those folks are students who are interested in getting the Network Plus. We would uh, encourage you to get the CompTIA A Plus certification first. Um, it is not a hard stop or a hard set prerequisite, but it is recommended. Um, there isn't 
anything that would prevent you from signing up and taking the network plus. Um, however, we do recommend that you follow the, the CompTIA um, suggested career pathway um, hierarchy of certification. So A plus would be something that we would recommend. Thank you. What would be a good course from a sales perspective? I work for a small IT company in sales. would really depend upon what your course or what your pathway you're deciding on. When I hear that, the first thing I think of is data analytics, because that way you can pull information on your um, potential customers, where the market's trending uh, by using, you know, any of the resources that we mentioned earlier. So that would be kind of my thought on that. And then the final question we have is how long does it take to complete cybersecurity? So cybersecurity is a little tricky because they are um, the uh, the pathway really depends on the prerequisite skills you have coming in the door. So if I already have the Security Plus certification, and then I could just take the CYSA course. Uh, and add that credential to my skill set. If I'm coming in totally new to IT, um, you know, maybe from a different line of work, retail, manufacturing, or what have you, then my path is going to be a little bit longer. Because again, we we try to follow that CompTIA um, career pathway as they've got it laid out. So you're looking at A plus, Network plus, and then the first security credential would be the Security plus. Uh, credential and then possibly the CYSA and and then more advanced courses. So really, uh, the short answer it it depends on the on the student and what they know already before they start their 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 pathway. Wonderful and final note maybe. Um, so we work with Microsoft and Cisco Red Hat. So we. Definitely work with Cisco and Red Hat. Jennifer would need to speak with uh, the Microsoft because she oversees that those courses. And that's from Michael, who was asking earlier about um, a good course from a sales perspective. Um, again, you know, both both pathways could be applicable. Um, learning Microsoft more in depth or going into Cisco Red Hat where you can be an administrator over networks. Um, but I think a good salesperson does need to understand their product. So, you know, either one would work for this. Wonderful. So I think that finishes up our presentation for tonight. If you have any questions, feel free to contact and reach out to Kobe and Jennifer. Uh, might be one of the uh, Anna, the technical assistant. So. Uh, thank you so much, Kobe and Jennifer, for presenting tonight. Always great information to provide to our public. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Thank you. And everyone else, thank you for attending. Like uh, Samantha said earlier, we value your time. So thank you for coming. Definitely. We look forward to uh, working with you guys. So just reach out.